if you don't own an RV and maybe you're thinking you want to rent one, but you're not sure how you would go about doing it, well, we're going to talk about that today with someone who has just recently rented a motorhome in this episode of Travels with Delaney, the podcast. Hey everyone, my name's Patrick. I'm Patty. And we are so excited today to have joining us for this very special podcast. We used to call you guys the aunt and uncle from Texas, and then we finally decided we'd reveal your identity since (laughs) since you weren't in the witness protection program. (laughs) But most of you will know my uncle Dennis as Colonel Woody and my aunt Priscilla. Right. And I don't know what, it's been a few months ago Mm -hmm. that we started planning this journey. But before we get into that, we always do this little thing right at the start of every podcast we like to call This or That. Dun, dun, dun. So (laughs) we're giving you a this or that, and you just have to answer it, you know, like top of mind. So the question is, between these two destinations, which was your favorite trip? Your trip to Africa or your Greek Isles trip? Oh, Africa. You You can't top Africa. Yeah, Africa. Oh my really? Goodness. For both of you? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. And, and don't, well, don't get me wrong. Getting, uh, well, we need to clarify. Right. Our Greek Greek Isles trip included the Holy Lands. That was awesome. And that was very emotional. Right. But in Africa, you truly got to see all of God's creations in their splendor. All right. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I was expecting, I don't know why, I assume because of the Holy Lands being part of the Greek Isle, mm-hmm. that you would go that away. So this is really interesting, mm-hmm. that the Africa trip. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, how many days were you in Africa? Do you remember? We were gone um, 18 days 18 total. Days. So days. we were in mm-hmm. Africa um, um, about 16 days. Yeah, 16 days. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And because we've been privy mm-hmm. to some of the photos yep. and video, we know you saw some amazing yes. wildlife oh, on that trip. we and, did. And, and I think that's why it just, um, uh, without g- getting too in-depth, when you're sitting in your safari Jeep, or and a Jeep's not, the, that's not fair, it's not a Jeep, but anyway, your safari car, And you literally have hundreds of elephants walking around you on both sides. And they could care less about you. And you're just like. There. I I mean. I mean, it was the same way we were the same way with giraffes. They walked around us and zebra. They were all over the place. And yeah. So that and and it's a rugged beauty. Right. And and so. Oh, my gosh. You know. Obviously, where Christ walked is sacred ground, mm-hmm. right? But it was just Africa. I think God took us there to say, "Do you get it now about creation?" <laughs> right. Yeah. I did this. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. Cool. Well, okay, that was a yeah, good this was, or that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we could one. probably have like a whole podcast just talking about the Africa <laughs> trip. But actually, that's not the trip we want to talk about today. Um, today, what we want to do is talk about the trip we're currently yep. on. And I think we're on day eight, maybe. Eight. Yes, that sounds about right. I think yeah, so. about mm-hmm. day eight. And so this winter, you called me up and you said, "Hey, what's your summer travel plans looking like?" Because we don't have any. And I said, "Have you ever been to Maine?" <laughs> and the answer was, "No, no, no. <laughs> because you've been almost everywhere in the world, or I mean, a lot, a lot of, places of places in the world, in Europe, of, yeah, yeah, because uh-huh. of your Air Force. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you're still trying to see America." And so I had suggested that um, you rent a motorhome so that you could be right with us on this trip. And so today we thought we would talk about your motorhome rental experience. Yep. Now, this is not your first time RVing. Oh, no. Uh, we've actually, well, like so many people, um, we start out in a tent. Yep. <laughs> And I think I told you the story, and I won't tell everybody the story. We were driving down a country road one day and saw an old Sears pop-up canvas camper. And anyway, and then Priscilla's mother and father had a uh, a uh, a small Class C, right? And we got that from them. Anyway, we progressed to a motor a Class A motorhome. We had a 34-foot Itasca Sun Cruiser, and then we sold that before uh, because we got an assignment to go back to Europe. Right. So, no, yeah, I mean, we've 
we've had a motor home. So driving a motor home, you've done that before. So yes. that wasn't anything mm-hmm. new. Now, how long did you own the motor home? We, th- we think it's about 11 years. Mm-hmm. About 11 okay. years, yeah. I think that's right. And you actually kind of like were full-timers for a short period of time. Maybe maybe full-timer is not the right word, but you lived in your motor home on base for a while. Mm. Well, it, that was actually, we uh, in the military when you move, it's called a, 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 a PCS. We won't get into right. military acronyms. But the, what was great about us is, especially when it was an assignment from a stateside to stateside base, I could literally just hang all my uniforms. Priscilla could hang some of her clothes and put them in a motor home, hook the truck up in the back, f- fill it full. And instead of living out of four suitcases for a couple of months till you get your household goods and everything, we would just take uh, on uh, on uh, Air Force Base, it's called the FAM Camp. You take your motor home there, hook up, set up. And we were, we were golden living large while everybody else was in a billeting room with four suitcases. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you said, too, we get to use our stuff. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why we love RV because yep. we always say it's it's our sheets, our towels. Yep. Our, our dirt. Yep. <laughs> Everything. You know, yes. it's ours. Yes. And to us. So, yes. so, okay. So you're no stranger to RVing. So I suggested renting a motor home. And I even looked up that Cruise America, which I think is probably maybe one of the largest, if not the largest, rental place here in the u.s and maybe canada as well because we see a lot of those and so let's just start with um the reservation process how was that for you actually it was it was uh for an old guy like me that's not that's a sometimes technically challenged it was a piece of cake their website is very informative uh we could look at the floor plans both what they called day and night meaning as you're traveling here's how it looks right uh when you're ready to uh basically sleep here's the configuration showing how you know what would make into a bed like a sofa dinette and all that right um for us even though it's just the two of us we rented their largest motor home because we wanted a walk around bed right um and 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 it was all I did it all online, never talking to anyone, and it was it was quite easy. Okay, good. And you're currently in I believe it's thirty feet long. Yes, if I'm correct, Class C motorhome. Right, and that that's the Cruise America's largest. largest. Okay, at least in the United States. And you had to go to thirty feet to get the walk around bed, at least mm-hmm. as of the current. Yes. Time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the reservations made now. Um, do you remember, did you have to pay in full or could you do just like a deposit to hold the reservation? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's either a 300, I think it's a $300 deposit. Okay. And in fact, uh, it was not put on my, the full rental was not put on my credit card till the day we picked it up. Okay. Okay. Because I think that would be something people would want to know, like Mm -hmm. how, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, obviously, check the website, uh, but like so many things, it's somewhat of a, if you will, a gradual. I think it's if you cancel within prior to three weeks, you get a full refund. Okay. And then after that, it, and it's the $300. Kind of like prorated, right. yeah, on the deposit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're able to book it, put down a small deposit to hold it, yep. and you're good to go. Um, mileage, because I think that's always a question that people ask is like, I have the, I have to rent the motorhome. What about the mileage? And if I remember right, they give you, depending on how many days you rent, yes. they give you an allotment of miles. Yes. And I, I, I know you I won't did, remember I didn't bring the, the exact, contract. Right. Uh, but yes, you get an allotment of miles. And in our case, um, the way that our trip has been planned, I can't remember if we have to pay, it's going to be just a few miles because, you know, as you, well, you don't, sure. I mean, uh, right. we, we've, we've had base camps for lack of better right. words. Sure. Yeah, so I, I, I was thinking, because I remember looking it up, I was thinking you actually have enough miles because we, we basically left Boston, for those yep. of you not knowing, we, I guess we haven't really said what we're, we've done here. We left Boston or the outskirts of Boston, drove slowly for, what, four nights all the way to Ellsworth, Maine, which really might have, I don't even know how many miles that was, but it's not that many. And then um, 
and then we came over to Vermont where we currently are, and then we'll return it on Saturday. And I think we're, what did I say, a little over 100 miles maybe? Something like yeah. that, yeah. So I was thinking that because you had rented for nine nights, ten days, something like that, that maybe you're covered. And then if you go over that, it just becomes like a per mile. Yes, so if you were leaving, let's say if you'd picked up in Texas and you were driving clear to yeah. Yellowstone, this could get very yeah. costly uh, very quickly. Yeah, I would, I'd, I'd have to hock everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in this case where you flew from Texas to Boston, Boston. Yep. picked it up in the location you want to be in, mm-hmm. and then you go out exploring. Right. Mm-hmm. And the other nice thing is you haven't driven it A except lot. when we yep. move camps because Correct. you have the – I guess the concierge service of us because <laughs> um, we have the truck where we can all load in the truck and that saves miles then too. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's the reservation process. Mm-hmm. Am I missing anything on that or anything you want to add? Well, the, the, the only thing I'll add is, and, and it's a data point of one, but the pickup location for ours, um, I started communicating with them early on. Even though it it doesn't it doesn't tell you to communicate with them until uh, to schedule your pickup appointment, right? But I would suggest to anyone, especially like in our case, we we were flying in to Boston and not knowing a lot about Boston, especially the I mean we looked on the map for their location, but I called I called the location. Uh, because on the Cruise America website, it says, it suggests if you're flying in, you might want to call the location because they might be able to recommend a shuttle service. Um, and I called them, and uh, very nice. Every time I talked to them, the people were very nice. But they said, we can't recommend a shuttle service, but we know there are, are plenty. The one thing that... The young lady the day I talked, she said, you know, some people try and do the the train and bus. Okay. And she says, if you got suitcases, if you can afford it, do a shuttle service. Um, and we did. And and uh, if you come into Boston to pick up a motorhome, I suggest go Boston. It's it's one of a sh- the shuttle services, and, and they were awesome as well. They were. Uh, they were waiting for us Very when we helpful. got there. They monitored our flight, mm-hmm. um, and it was actually only twenty dollars more than Uber. Oh wow! Okay. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. And your flight actually was Even like thirty early. minutes ahead of schedule, and yet they were still ready for you. Yes. Because they, yeah. cause mm-hmm. they when you when you use a shuttle service, and maybe some places it's much more expensive than an Uber or a taxi, uh, but that's one of the things that they do. You give them your flight information. And that's part of their service is if you're late, we're going to be there. If you're early, we're going to be there. Right. Oh, cool. Okay. Good. So we've got you in Boston. You've shuttled over, and now it's time to pick it up. How was that process? Um, well, the old expression, you don't know what you don't know. Right. <laughs> and um, having had an RV, um, bad on me, I'm sure it's somewhere on their website, I had a lot of assumptions. We had a lot of assumptions. And um, we got there. And once again, the folks there, we got there early. And I told them, I said, I know we're early. We'll be glad to wait. And they, they did. They went out of their way uh, to, to get it uh, down to, you know, moved around and everything where you do the walk around. Um, so we did the walk around. Um, and. The gentleman that did the walk around was very thorough. Right. Um, and and I will tell you, if you have not owned an RV, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And, and he even said that, please, if you don't understand something or if you, you've got questions, uh, he was very... Uh, very nice about that and he he i don't know it was probably about a half an hour yeah i would say so so, at least yeah because we were we We were were actually there waiting Uh so we watched i mean Mm -hmm. i don't think there was a cranny of that they went around at least on the outside right he opened every hatch and was showing you stuff yeah um i guess if if you're uh, like us and you had an rv you don't now and Here's a great great example. You want to go out with 
family or friends, a few things just to know. Um, and the more I think about it, I understand the why. Uh, good example. Ours, there's no leveling system. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is also uh, nothing in the motorhome to level with, like wheel blocks or what do you call them, the Johnson? Uh, the Anderson Anderson, levels. Anderson, yeah. Yeah. Anderson levelers. Yep. Um, so we've been pretty, well, fortunately, Pat and Patty, mm-hmm. we, we've borrowed their equipment. But if you were on your own and you didn't have a level site, um, I'm not sure what they do. <laughs> well, well crooked, you'd, yeah. you'd be rolling yeah. downhill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were you always would. rolling out of bed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they didn't so, know that. Yeah. But that's, that's something to think about. Uh, another thing, it, it, it hasn't bothered us, but it could be uh, probably a, a bit of a shock to a family. There's no TV or ra- Well, there's a radio in the truck chassis. Um, there's no slide. Uh, there's no awnings. And once again, as we thought about it, because they rent to people that have never rented, it's probably almost a liability on their part because someone would take off with the slide out or the awning out yep. or the jacks down. Yep. Or, yep. Right. Um, the other thing uh, that that just from a comfort point of view, we didn't think about, uh, all the mattresses are vinyl covered. We understand it's a rental. Makes sense. So um, you might want to consider uh, getting a mattress pad. But even bigger than that is, um, and it does say in their literature, it's called an RV queen, at least in ours. Mm-hmm. If you can find a cheap set of RV queen sheets, it's worth the purchase. Which means it's a little bit shorter, shorter than a yeah. residential. Right. Week. I think like five inches yep. shorter. But it's enough to where you're swimming in your sheet all okay. the year. No, we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but th- th- once again, that's just something to know. Right. Um, I guess the other thing I would, I would suggest uh, insurance. Um, our company, they have insurance. That covers, if you will, you, but it's a twenty five hundred dollar deductible. Wow, that's a that's a steep deductible, <laughs> right? But what I did is, I called my insurance company uh, before I paid them because you can you can pay them uh, x amount a day for full coverage. I called uh, my insurance company, and my particular insurance company. Uh, we have rental car coverage, and I asked them, "We're getting we're getting ready to rent a motor home. Does that cover?" Our particular insurance company said, "Yes, it does." It's good to know. So, um, first off, make sure if you know you check with your insurance company because not everybody carries that little bit of extra insurance that covers a rental car. But because we fly and rent cars so often, we have it. Um, and then, basically, if you do have a mishap, uh, you're only paying the deductible on your whatever your policy is. Sure. So, but the, but beyond that, uh, the 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 booking. Um, I'm sorry, I'm babbling as always. You guys don't know. No, me, no, no, you're <laughs> great. This is great information. Um, if you're flying in, like we. Uh, and you don't have family that's going to greet you because uh, Pat and Patty have provided us with sheets and towels and everything. Um, they they will have – you can rent in addition all mm-hmm. of that. Right, as a package on a, a – and package. I believe the linen was a per-day package. Right. Yeah. And and the uh, the kitchen pack was per trip. Right. Um, and the towel package was – Anyway, it's all on their website. Right. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you're renting close to your home, um, my recommendation would be rent it, drive it home, and pack it. Yeah. Right. And save yourself and don't use uh, their stuff. And your kitchen package did not come with a coffee maker. 
no, it's it's very basic. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, the it has a a three burner stove, um, and a, a microwave, a kitchen package, and the no, and a refrigerator in right. the in the motorhome. Right. Um. But no toaster, no coffee maker. The kitchen package does have a tea kettle. It okay. Does. Hmm. And pots, <coughs> pans, silverware, plates. Whatever. Roll basic. Gotcha. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. We're going to take a quick break and I want to thank our sponsor for this episode of our podcast. And that is we're on this great trip and Maine is a great destination. But if you're not sure where you might want to take a trip with your RV, you definitely want to check out RV Destination Magazine. Now, RV Destinations Magazine has been around for a while in digital form. But we are really excited to make the big announcement, which most people know if you've been to their website. But starting this year, it's now going to be in print. You know, some people really like, like a yeah. printed copy of their uh, yeah, magazine. Yeah, absolutely. And so RV Destinations Magazine comes out quarterly, and it features both well-known RV destinations as well as those gems that we may not think of as places you want to go camping. So definitely want to check it out the other nice thing is and we just got the advanced copy of the print version it is an absolutely gorgeous magazine beautiful i mean it's gorgeous online the it always has been the photography oh, it's amazing. and so randy and callie who own the magazine they do such a super job with in fact we're going to be having them on for an episode uh in the future to talk about the magazine and their travels but what they try to do is really keep this magazine high in content and very low in advertisement yep. where most magazines it's just about the, opposite, the reverse yeah. so yep. Um, and you have options if you want to subscribe. You can subscribe to the digital only. If you're a digital person, you can do just the print or actually you can do both. And that way you would have access on any of your devices as well as having that beautiful copy that you could keep in your RV or at home on the coffee table, wherever. So if you want to check out the magazine, go to rvdestinationmagazines.com. And again, thank you to them for sponsoring this episode. All right. So we have the motor home. We're ready to start heading up the coast of Maine. <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo>! Adventure begins. <laughs> so tell us about the trip so far with the motor home. How is it driven? Let's start with how it oh. drove. How it drove. Um, ours is a 2017 with uh, 145,000 miles on it. And fortunately for me, uh, I grew up around trucks and and heavy equipment and what have you. And as soon as I saw that odometer, I said, I got, this is probably not going to be, for lack of better words, a real tight suspension. <laughs> um, uh, and so, like any vehicle that you have, uh, you're not used to, uh, and we did, we were, fortunately, we, we were didn't have to drive a long ways. But we were in some pretty narrow streets right off the bat, yeah, getting to the interstate. Um, but it, it actually, I, uh, as far as the power, the drivetrain, the transmission, um, it's it's quite remarkable. I had this fear it might be under power, and I was going to, you know, constantly be sure. trying to keep up. Right. And it's got plenty of power. Uh, like I say, once I got the feel of it. Uh, I'm very comfortable driving it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do uh, I do like the uh, I, and I'm not a mechanical guy, but the transmission has a transmission brake when you're coasting down a hill, which then you're not burning a lot of brake with the weight. Right. So I like that, um, and it it from that perspective. Overall, very, very, very pleased. Good driving. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. Now, Aunt Priscilla, let's talk about <laughs> your thoughts on the trip because I know you got some thoughts on the RV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I really like it. I mean, it's uh, it's riding very well. Right. It really is. And um, I was a little bit disappointed with the refrigerator. It was a little bit dirty, and I cleaned it out, and it's fine. Right. Um, but. Um, um, other than that, I just we missed having an RV because we really enjoyed mm-hmm. it when we had it. Right. And this has brought back a lot of good memories oh, for good. us. It really good. has. Yeah. And uh, then being with you, um, it makes it even better. Oh, uh, it's been super it's special been for us. Yeah. yeah. It has. Yeah. And, and I, I will say, 
had we not hopefully when you rent you won't you won't have to hurry and hurry's maybe not the right word but we knew we had x amount of miles to cover and we wanted to get there before dark um had we had more time and priscilla's being too nice uh, i would have probably insisted and oh by the way yes you didn't say this everything surface wise was cleaned well and we actually opened the refrigerator to make sure it was cooling but we didn't take a thorough look take a thorough look at everything right and if it's not right <clears throat> because in the brochure it says bring it back clean well give it to me clean right <laughs> absolutely well, yeah but, but we will re- be returning it clean it's yeah. very clean. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's more clean than it we is got. very clean. Yeah, because yeah, I, mean, I think it was more than the refrigerator, yeah. though. If it you're was. truly being honest. No, I mean, it, was. it really needed, it a, needed good a deep clean. clean. It, it did. Yeah. It really did. It, all the it, way over. As you know, our first morning, we spent about a half a day. Yeah. Right. Um, but, the, and the other thing, too, is the exterior was, it was almost one of those so dirty you were getting dirty getting in it. Right. Um, uh, and I and here again, I, I always try and be fair. I don't I know they actually the day we were there, they were renting quite a few of them and we were early. I don't know. If, but it was just a few minutes. It was yeah, you weren't long. super. Early. Yeah, no, I, I understand. But I always want to be fair. Know, right. Right. I know. Um, because everybody there was so nice. They were. But um, it, other than that. Uh, and the other thing was, I and I hope it's OK. I mentioned this, but. You picked it up with less than a quarter of a, a tank, tank of, of fuel gas, on board, yeah. and here we are in a suburb of Boston. <laughs> we just we want to get, get it filled out. up, yeah. Yeah, and so finding, you know, sometimes in big cities, I know for us when it's we're tough. with an RV, it's tough to find right. gas station to get into. We kind of lucked out. We, we did. did, but mm-hmm. I mean, I think that was something that a lot of people that would be a struggle for them. Mm-hmm. You you've driven a motor home before. So it's probably easier for you getting into that gas station than maybe somebody who's never driven. And I thought that was odd that, you know, right. they didn't have more fuel That's for true. it. Yeah, because when, when I filled it up, and we were only two and a half miles away from uh, where we picked right. it up. Right. And it took over 45 gallons. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing that we were down to three to five gallons. Right. And as an example, had we had to get on the interstate from that location and, right. and go for a ways mm-hmm. i'm not sure how far we would have made it right and mileage wise i know you checked one tank um i can't remember what you told me you thought you roughly average well on the on the fill up uh yesterday okay we calculated and we were getting 9.8 yeah there you go that's pretty good yeah, really. yeah i think that so really and is. obviously mileage will vary uh-huh. on it the will. terrain and mm-hmm. speed right and, and but We've been, uh, um, oh, we we haven't, we, we've we been, because neither one of us want to get an out-of-state ticket, we've been very cautious about obeying the speed limit. Yeah. Right. And because of some of the roads we're on, uh, uh, and the beautiful drive up here, uh, we're not, I think that's helping on the mileage. Right. Yeah, because I'm kind of weird about that. I, I'll go maybe two miles mm-hmm. an hour over the speed limit, and that's about it. Because I, I, unbelievably, in, what am I, 54, I've never had a speeding ticket in 54 years, and I'd like to keep it that yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> my friends make fun of me. They say I drive like an old man. But I just, <laughs> you does. know, it's just not worth it to me. So, um, but yeah. Only in your truck do you drive like an old man. In my car, it's like a little yeah, go-kart. Maybe. <laughs> you think you're like on a speed track or something. <laughs> <laughs> so we did have one issue. Yep. Yeah, uh, we did. Yep. You want to share the issue? Well, uh, yeah, we were on. A, uh, honestly, uh, yeah. this time it was fortunate. We were on the interstate and we blew a tire. Mm-hmm. For uh, once again, fortunately, it was on one of the duels. So, uh, other than when it first, because the tire really came apart. And I know Patrick posted some pictures. Oh. It, it sounded like the back end exploded. It, and it was the rubber hitting underneath. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but fortunately, it was a, one of the duels to where, um, other than the rubber coming off and just a little bit of fishtailing, I didn't have any controllability problems, not like if it were a front tire. Right. We got off to the side of the road, uh, and we were only a mile from an exit. Mm-hmm. So I was able, because it was a duel, 
uh, to make it up to the exit and get safely off of the interstate. And once again, we were uh, uh, he was watching over us because we see a signed park and ride. Yep. And it was probably not 100 yards. We turned right into the park and ride, and we waited there uh, for the, uh, the service people. Yeah. Right. And um, this is, it was somewhat frustrating. Um, and I know that they've got thousands of units on the road probably every day. But, you know, when you're stranded, and think about, you know, you're renting RVs. So people are probably in places they're not familiar with. And, you know, thankfully it was just the two of us in the vehicle and, and Pat and Patty and, and the, the dogs in, in their vehicle. First off, you dial, and what do you get? Automation. <laughs> and I'm telling you, uh, had it maybe been an inexperienced RVer with three or four kids, um, and you've you've just experienced a flat on the interstate or god forbid an accident and you dial up and you got to play the automation game maybe these companies ought to think about you know the emergency line the first thing they get is a human mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely um and then when i finally got to a human i was i only, the human told me Somebody will call you in a couple of hours. Oh, my gosh. So there we sat. Um, and I understand it takes time to put things together. But what I found very frustrating is, is when I finally got the call at about an hour and 40 minutes is nothing had been done. That's when the getting somebody to you process was starting. Mm -hmm. Right. And I really think that that could use some improvement. Absolutely. Um, and and I, I have to be uh, honest here. Um, fortunately for us, we were able to find somebody local that would help us on our own. And we were able to get the tire changed we did have a good spare, a brand new spare. A good spare. Um, we were able to get it changed, and we were back <coughs> on the road in about two and a half hours. Had we waited for the whole Cruise America process, I don't think I'm exaggerating. It would have probably been six to eight, if not longer. I bet yeah. that's right. Oh, I would agree. I, would agree. I bet that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. There was no urgency. No. And, no. and because we were, and I did, I called, well, first off, I asked, the young man I talked to, the, the second human I talked to who called me at the one hour and 40 minute mark, and he said, well, I'm going to start working, and he told me the whole process. They were going to call Goodyear. Goodyear was going to call me, and I'm going, oh, boy. <laughs> um, and I didn't know if, you know, maybe Goodyear was going to have bad year call me. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, and I asked him, I said, hey, if some farmer comes along and happens to be really nice and has the tools we need, uh, can I change the tire? And he was, you know, he had to be, I, I'm sure they've got their rules. And he yep. says, well, I can't recommend that, um, but I can't tell you no. And I said, well, what if I can find a local tire company that would do it? And he said, well, that's okay. But he said, and I, I won't go into the whole litany. But we can send our people, and he said, because you could get a local tire company, and they could charge you a ridiculous amount, and we have people on contract. I understand the business end of it. Um, we are very fortunate. Uh, we, we got a hold of a local tire company. They sent a young man out with the proper equipment. Yep. Uh, and... I think from the time he arrived till the time he left was less than 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. it was. He was awesome. Oh, he yeah. was good. And, in fact, I think I remember him saying something like, you know, 
sorry it took me so long to get here, which it didn't really take him that 35 long. 35 minutes. Yeah, and he goes, well, we're going to get you back on the road as quick Aww. as possible. That was the first Good thing he said. Yeah. 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 yeah, he was awesome. Yep. Yep. Can, I, can I say something, Patrick? Yeah. I think one of the things that I kept thinking about was how blessed we were because we were on a two-lane beautiful road right before that. Right. And it was narrow. Yeah. Can you imagine if that had happened, happened on, on that? that? Right. And, I mean, we had places where there were no sides. Right. So... We were oh, very yeah. fortunate yeah. that it happened where it did. Well, and a mile away from the exit. I just, you know, so yeah. like we, the, we were definitely looked after, that's for sure. And Patty even said, you know, when we were in the truck, she yeah. goes, boy, this could be so much worse. It could be pouring down yep. rain. It could. Or it could be super hot out. Yep. Or, you, you know, like there was just all these things she was saying, yep. like, this isn't that bad. It's not and a bad situation. You even said it's early in the day. Yeah. It was early in the morning. Yeah. You know, it's Daylight. Not like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the interesting yeah. thing was. The route we were on was not the route we were going to take. No. And, isn't that funny? Isn't it funny how things work I know. out? I know. We were going to take like a two-lane road right, the whole way. all the I way know. to Vermont. Yeah. And we after my morning detour <laughs> on a two-lane road, I think we were all like, let's just let's get, get on the just, highway. And so yeah. we, luckily we, we did. were on the freeway. We did, which was a yeah. great move. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's so. weird how things go, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. It really uh -huh. is. And I know you pictured or you posted a picture of the company that sent out the young man. Right. Yeah, Greeley. Greeley's. Greeley, Greeley's Garage. Yeah. Awesome. From, I think they're Kudos near, to him. I think they're near Bodwin. 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 I think, Bo Bodwin. Bodwin. I think that's I where they're Well, right. I think he came out of Auburn. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's oh, how it, they were out of right. Maine. Yeah, uh, Maine. Auburn, Maine. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I got to tell you this, uh, you know, Bless people that work in the tire and brake business. They're always dirty. Yeah. It's a dirty job. Yeah. And for him to have such a positive attitude. He and, did. And he quickly, did. I mean, yep. obviously. He, he he made our day. Well, he, he knew exactly <laughs> what he was doing. Yeah. yeah. Got right to and, it. And uh, um, so uh, we, we were very fortunate to have the ability to to do that because we just wanted to get back on the road and and then I I did as soon as he w he arrived and he was finished I called uh, Cruise America and told them and and they were very grateful and they said they would uh, cancel uh, the Goodyear um, service people from sure. from making the trip right so. and we made it here we're yeah. we still did. here by five o'clock yeah. yep we had did. a nice dinner and all's well all, all well we have well. to do is get it back to yes. about a hundred miles right <laughs> <laughs> we will get knock that on thing, wood get knock that on but I, I will tell you uh um for a family if you can afford it uh if you could just see where we're filming this unbelievable um and and man Go see America. Yeah, yeah, it is beautiful. And and you get to see it uh, from an RV or a tent uh, or, or in, you know, yeah. it's just different um, uh, when you're, and boy, you just meet. We forgot that about uh, camping. Camping. We did. we did. And that was one of the things we loved about all the levels of camping um, is Boy, you just meet some really neat people, uh, kind, um, uh, well, and not just campers. Just sitting there in the parking ride, we had three different people stop. We did. And ask us, is everything okay? Oh, can I help? Can, can we that? help? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. They did. Um, that's great. And... Uh, and that's a man, that's the America I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. it is. I know. It Absolutely. is. It's, yep. I, I tell you, we always say, you know, when you go to an RV park, within minutes you have a lot of friends. friends. Mm -hmm. Yep. You go to a hotel. You if you say hi to somebody yeah. coming down the hallway, they start running. They think maybe you're going to attack them <laughs> or something. Yeah, I don't know what a little it is. More focused. I yeah. Think. You know, yeah. And so are. that's why we love driven. RVing. It's yeah. just it's so community based. Right. It is. Well, it and is. and you know, I I didn't want to really do it this morning. So far today, uh, let's see. I had breakfast at. <laughs> help me out, King Arthur King Flower. Arthur Flower. Yeah. Yep. King Arthur Flower. Uh, let's see. My next stop was. Uh, Where did we go? Oh, um, up at the Van Trap. The Trap Family. Trap, Trap, Trap Family Lodge. Lodge. Yep. yep. Uh, then it was to the cider mill. Yep. Yep. And, and I was forced to uh, <laughs> yeah. forced against his will. 
<laughs> we tied him down to uh, a <laughs> maple creamy to have some cider, yeah. uh-huh. a maple creamy, and an apple a donut. Apple yes. donut. Uh-huh. Apple donut. And then from there, I mean, I can't believe it. Uh, I I had to go taste cheese at Cabot, Cabot. yeah, Cabot. and chocolate, and then from there I had to walk across the parking lot to the <laughs> chocolate place, like champagne chocolate. <laughs> then we went to Ben and Jerry's, where where, where we... you got lucky, yeah. yeah. You, the line was so long, it you was. opted not to have ice cream for the second time yeah. today. <laughs> but I got a great picture of me pointing at the Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was this has been a great trip. It I tell has. It has. It has. Absolutely. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but we haven't turned the motor home in yet. But because we're recording this the day before, two days before we do. But what do you think that process will look like? Or what did they tell you? What 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 do you expect or what do you need to do? Um, we just we, we turn it in. And because of where we per, or per, or rented it from, uh, actually, it's a good a good deal because I even checked their price and their price is very they they will refill the propane there. So uh, a good example, since this is our last uh, stop, when we leave here, we're going to dump all the, the, the gray in the black water tank. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we're going to make sure that it's clean. Um, and it's immaculate right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and really beyond that, and then I have to take it back with least, at least an eighth of a tank of gas. That's what he told you. Yeah, yeah but I, I'm going to take it back with a little bit more than that. Um, and, and then do the walk around. And obviously check for damage sure. and everything. And obviously I've got to make sure that they're aware about the tire yep. right. to where they can get that replaced. Right. And then they just know the spare. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I. Be, beyond that, based on the literature and what the gentleman said, uh, and then because we have it, it, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. It ha- Ours has a generator. If you run the generator you do have to pay over and above by the hour. I can't remember how much. It's not a lot. But in our case, because of where we've stayed, we haven't even started right. the generator. Didn't need it. Uh, so I won't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. They'll obviously check the mileage to see if I'm under or over what's allotted. Um, and then because we will have the tanks empty, because he said if you bring it back with the tanks uh, full or not emptied, then you have to pay a dump fee, right. which is understandable. Right. Sure. Uh, because they have to pay a dump right. fee. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, I'm hoping maybe a half hour max right. for them to walk around sure. and fill the propane, and then us pay the final bill. And right. And then, and then we'll be off to go to Boston. Yeah, we'll be headed uh, to, the to the airport. To the airport. Yeah. airport. But hopefully we'll get one last lobster roll at Kelly's. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even think we told Aunt Priscilla no, that we, we have haven't. A, we have a stop for a quick sandwich if we have time. What is Good. It like? Revere Beach. Uh, yeah, Revere Beach. Kelly's Kelly's, Kelly's roast beef. beef. But if it's like it used to be, you can get their roast beef sandwiches are amazing. amazing. But they do a combo platter, half roast beef, half, half lobster roll. Oh, oh, okay. So, so you have the best. <laughs> and you're right on the water. Good. And then. Back on the plane, yeah. back home to Texas, <laughs> yeah. where you are, will be anxiously awaiting jelly from Maine, yep. uh, flour from here in Vermont at King Arthur, and maple syrup from here. In, yes, we in will. So, oh yes, lots of packages coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been great. Yeah, I, you know, sharing this because I think there are probably a lot of people who have always wondered about renting an RV, uh, an RV, and just didn't know how like it how it would yeah. work or what would it be like. And I think sharing your firsthand knowledge, especially right now, why it's so fresh mm-hmm. in your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, being that we're still on the trip, yep. I think this will be really useful to our mm-hmm. listeners. I think, and I, th- I think the, the other thing I would mention is if you're considering it and maybe you go like, oh, wow, they had that big 30-footer, they've got – it's either f- four or five different sizes all the way down to – We've seen them. A small <laughs> – Yeah, very a, small. A relatively mm-hmm. small, probably two-person. Right, right. So don't be intimidated by uh, – what we've described regarding the length and and all of that uh and i i know uh i did limited research but i know that uh there are multiple ways you can rent mm-hmm. um rvs and campers right. and, and what have you but uh, do your homework uh yep um 
well, everybody here knows me. I'm I'm paranoid, and I probably over research when I focus on something. But just read everything, but go do it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, just just go do it. Have fun. There you go. And I think that's our Delaney pro tip. We always so. wrap up with a Delaney, Delaney pro, pro tip, tip, and that sounds like a perfect pro tip. Just do uh, it because life do. is. We always say life is too, too short, short, and you should live it to Don't the fullest. Put off. Do what you can when you can. Mm-hmm. And go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. So go it seems like the, seems like the perfect pro tip. Yeah. Just do there it. You go. There you go. Oh wait, can can we even say that? I think that might be trademark. That's just do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's some shoe company that Nike. uses that. Nike. Yeah. 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 Nike. Oh so. well. Oh well. All right. Any last thoughts before we? Nope. Okay. Just We're to the say most thank blessed you. people in the world. Uh, yeah. But again, Patty and I can't so thank you enough oh, for gosh. doing this with we us. I mean, wonderful time. We have been looking forward to this oh, ever since gosh. the day you said yep. I rented a motor home. Like, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> yes. yes! <laughs> so and you and you didn't have to spend your entire life savings, yep. which was great, right? You got so to keep your watch. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, that's right. He was got, you told him he was going to have to sell a watch to go on this trip. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I promise. I'll, well, no, I won't promise. But <laughs> no, but once again, especially for families, um, you might look at the price of rental and go, wow. But uh, remember, it. you've got a refrigerator, mm-hmm. you've got a stove, you've got a microwave. And especially if you can take it back to your house, Yep. raid the pantry, raid the freezer. Yeah. And every day's picnic. There you yeah. go. And we make quite a few meals, <laughs> yes, really. We have. I mean, we yeah. have. We usually do. We too. have, yeah. Yeah, which is mm-hmm. why we RV. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, very true. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for doing the podcast with us. And uh, hopefully we'll get you back again. Yeah. Maybe we can talk more about the Africa trip. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, all right, everyone. And we always have to close by saying a huge thank you to our friend and producer, Jim. Jim. Uh, thank without you, Jim. Jim Kuzman, he's the one that yes. actually got us started on this podcast. And he's the one that will make us all sound really good. I'm still waiting on him to make me look good. On the video yeah, version? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Jim, you got to work on that. Um, no, he doesn't. But, Patty's beautiful. Oh. Yeah. He's beautiful. Oh. He's beautiful. I knew he's my favorite. Uncle. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what's going on now. He even gave me a he gave me a name. Yeah. He did. Itchy. Itchy. Yeah. Itchy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody mm-hmm. have to stay tuned. Yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, the next podcast. I, oh, wait a minute. It's not a name. Oh, oh. it's a it's a call. It's sign. a call sign. Sorry. <laughs> call yeah. sign. Yeah. I'll get it right. Oops. All right, everyone. Oopsie. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, we'll see you on down the road. Bye. Bye. Travels with Lenny, we'll see you on down the road.